In this video, we'll discuss anterior spinal artery syndrome, anterior card syndrome, causes blood supply of the spinal cord, and the effects produced by anterior spinal artery syndrome and anterior card syndrome. Anterior spinal artery syndrome occurs from interruption of the blood supply of the spinal cord in the anterior two-thirds of the spinal cord circumference throughout the length. So, what's the blood supply of the spinal cord? The spinal cord is supplied by one anterior and two posterior spinal arteries. The anterior spinal artery arises from the union of the two branches of the vertebral artery. Vertebral artery is the termination of basilar artery. It runs down in the anterior spinal groove and supplies anterior two-thirds of the spinal cord circumference. In addition, a radicular or the feeder artery also supply blood to the spinal cord. Feeder arteries arise at different levels of the spinal cord and are connected to interior and posterior spinal arteries. Where do these radicular arteries arise? In the cervical region at cervical 6 in the upper thoracic region and number 3 at thoracic 11 and thoracic 12 from the aorta. One that arises from the aorta is the most important feeder artery and is known as artery of Adam Quicks. And where is the greatest ischemic risk in severe systemic hypotension. Greatest ischemic risk is at the level of third and fourth thoracic region and at the boundary zone of anterior and posterior spinal arteries. Anterior supplies anterior two-third and posterior supplies posterior one-third of the spinal cord circumference. What's the immediate response of the body after a spinal cord injury and infarction? A spinal shock and autonomic dysreflexia. So what happens in a spinal shock. A spinal shock is characterized by flexed paralysis, atonia and areflexia, lower motor neuron type of lesion below the level of lesion and also there is bradycardia and hypotension, vasomotor failure leading to vasodilatation and venodilatation and severe hypotension. Autonomic dysreflexia. Autonomic dysreflexia occurs after spinal shock and usually occurs in injuries above thoracic sac. There is severe acute hypertension, bradycardia and throbbing headache, sweating and blurred vision. So what are the clinical feature or effects produced by anterior spinal cord artery infarction? Acute infarction of the anterior spinal artery or injury to the spinal cord produces paraplegia or quadriplegia. Motor weakness is more than the sensory loss. So which tracks are involved? Corticospinal, the descending tract, and spinothalamic, the ascending tracts, are affected by a direct trauma or ischemic blood supply of the anterior spinal arteries. Anterior horn cells are also affected and they produce lower motor neuron type of lesion that is flexibility, atrophy, atonia, and areflexia. The lateral corticospinal tract damage produces upper motor type of le neuronal lesion, the spasticity, hypertonia, hyperreflexia and a positive Babinski sign. And how about the sensory loss? A sensory loss is a dissociated sensory loss. Why? Because it affects the spinothalamic tract whereas the dorsal columns which are posteriorly they are not affected by an anterior spinal artery infarction. So it is spares the vibration and position sense which are carried by the dorsal column tract. So what are the causes of the anterior spinal artery syndrome or the anterior car syndrome. It may be due to forceful flexion of the neck rotation which causes anterior dislocation and compression fraction of the vertebral body encroaching the ventral canal. It may also be caused by aortic atherosclerosis or a dissecting aneurysm of the aorta or a coarctation of aorta. In coarctation of aorta there is hypertension in upper limb and upper extremity and hypotension or pulselessness in the lower limb. It may also be caused vertebral artery occlusion from where the anterior spinal artery arises. It may also be caused by severe systemic hypotension or vasculitis due to SLE or it may occur due to thrombi from a feeder arteries and injury to the feeder arteries during operation or surgery in that region. MRI usually diagnoses anterior spinal artery syndrome but it may be 
be normal during the first day. In spinal cord lesions, a horizontal line is the hallmark and defines the upper limit of the sensory, motor and autonomic defects. So what's the upper limit of the sensory defects in spinal cord lesions? In sensory lesions, there is hyperesthesia or hyperpathia at the upper limit of the horizontal line. In unilateral sensory lesions, horizontal line is one or two segments below the level of the lesion. In bilateral lesion, the horizontal line is at the level of the lesion. And what's the upper limit of the motor defect at the horizontal line? There is flexibility, atonia and areflexia, involvement of the anterior horn cell. And what's the autonomic defect? Absent sweating below the level of the lesion. And what's neurological level? Neurological level is the lowest level of normal sensory and motor function on both sides of the body.